Hello everyone, in today's video I'm going to be talking about 5 YouTube channels that I came across recently and find very fascinating for the type of educational, informative, and fun videos they create. I love watching YouTube and discovering new channels that inform people on certain subjects and issues in the world most people really aren't aware of. I feel these are some of the best type of channels for the engaging videos they provide and the hard work they put in to make them both intriguing and entertaining to watch. I'm not going to be ranking these channels from best to worst or worst to best as I just want to list them off and hopefully get people interested in them and possibly subscribe to these channels. As always, the links and attributions for these videos will be in the description below. Now with all that said, let's start off with Japan Analysis. So I really like YouTube channels that go and t talk about the aspects of Japanese culture, inform people about the society and their lives living in Japan. There's a lot of vlog channels out there that become popular because they show the lives, their lives living in Japan. And I think one notable example that comes to mind is like Chris Broad or, and Broad in Japan. His channel I've been following for a long period of time as he makes vlogs really traveling across Japan, talking about his culture and how he, how his life has been living in Japan. Now the thing is is that these are very prevalent throughout YouTube of making these types of vlog channels where people talk about their life in Japan itself but the thing that distinguishes Japan analysis from these other YouTube channels is that this person goes into deep dives into aspects of Japanese culture that people really aren't made aware of and he'll talk and cover ridiculous individuals, uh, his experience of eating the types of fast food that are available in Japan and I really like these types of videos they makes because unlike vlogs they're a lot more informative and you get a lot more important aspects of Japan and things that you really would have never even heard about uh, here in the United States or outside of Japan. I think the, the one video that I came across where I learned about this channel was the story of the most hated woman in Japan and this video covers this woman's life who was kind of dead set on this campaign of really terrorizing her neighbors as she was harassing them constantly and she became famous for her behavior because of the fact that in Japan that type of uh, harassment that she had towards that she committed towards her neighbors is something that is very much frowned upon it's very rare to see that within Japan and I love that kind of video because it goes into detail gives the gives really her account and the perspective from the neighbors of why this these altercations occurred and I really love that video and then from there I started kind of going down the rabbit hole of all other content that this guy talks about. Some of the other famous videos that he's made, known for is the meme videos where he explains Japanese memes as the sense of humor that a lot of young Japanese people have within their country is really different from I think the memes that are present within you know outside of that in the United States in Europe because of the fact that they're always very much specific they're kind of in relation to a lot of Japanese anime shows and stuff and so learning about the the type of sense of humor that Japanese people tend to have and the type of memes that they share is pretty fascinating to me even though it's like <laughs> some some aspects of it can be ridiculous other than that though there's also the person who makes this channel has lived in Japan for a period of time so he discusses the type of food that he would purchase within Japan now other channels do this they they talk about many aspects of like Japanese food cultures it's very popular but with his videos I like the fact that he kind of just discusses the fast food chains that are present within Japan and also he makes videos where he discusses individuals who would really eat fast food for a long period of time in Japan for example the challenge that changed this Japanese man's life forever is a video where you see someone who really was eating fast food beef bowls for more than 500 days and it's very fascinating to me but that I, I guess in Japan the thing is is that what they consider their version of McDonald's is really beef bowls and eating large quantities of these of these bowls is very unhealthy and it's not a it's not a good thing to continue having a lifestyle where you're just eating a lot of these fast food joints where they're providing beef bowls but 
uh, all all of that combined, I think, really makes it for a channel that is not just educational or informative in, in a way, but also very entertaining. And that's why I like about it. Now, I think the most popular video that has come out on this channel that a lot of people be, have become aware of is the angry Japanese freakout about this person who had essentially came up against these dr train spotters in Japan as train spotting is very popular over there in that country but the type of train spotters that they have within that country can be very hostile and aggressive as they feel that anybody who inter interferes with their process of train spotting or filming trains and stuff they'll retaliate in a very vicious manner and I think that the video where this guy who was riding his bike uh, parallel to a train and he kind of interfered with their shots and the fact that it stirred up some uh, somewhat of a roar online was actually hilarious to me I think you should check out that video it's very short it's only five minutes 31 seconds but it's all just really great in the end of how this channel kind of again it, it talks about aspects of, of the culture that it pr is present within Japan that I was never really a aware of the type of intriguing individuals that have become famous within that country the meme of Japan's most embarrassing man I really I've heard of this meme before and I really didn't know that much about it but I love his explanation as he really goes into details about this individual of how his life was ruined because of himself of the stupid decisions that he makes and I highly recommend watching that video as well and and I just, I don't know, I just love the more I watch these types of videos, the more I kind of get the understanding of the type of memes, the type of things that Japanese people find interesting or fascinating. And I love it because it's from the perspective of somebody who has lived in Japan for a long period of time. And I think it's a really great channel. Currently, I think as of the making of this video, this channel has about 182,000 subscribers with 40 videos. So he's been consistently growing. As you can see that there's been a lot of people who have taken interest in this type of content. But um, yeah, I think that you should j definitely check it out. Watch a Japan Analysis, really fantastic channel. Sir Manatee. I really like this educational channel because it's from a guy who is a history student in central Germany where on his channel he focuses mainly on 19th and 20th century social and political history as it pertains to central Europe uh, mostly in Ger about Germany, Austria, Poland, the Czech Republic, all these countries that are within central Europe in between the 19th and 20th century so before World War One. The one video that I came across was Posen or Poznan and the Kaiser Reich. This is the first video I saw of his and he talks about how at that period of time when the German Empire was growing in the late 19th century how it started to impose its will onto other minorities specifically in this video the Poles as they were trying to undergo a process of Germanization they were trying to outlaw the language of Polish within this specific city and they were really trying to push the Polish language to disappear and also push the Polish to become more German as they were discriminating against them and the relationship that was there presently between the Germans and the Polish at that period of time as this was something that occurred for a period of time within the German Empire of the Germans trying to Germanize a lot of these ethnic minorities of kind of eliminating their languages and imposing German culture upon these people and I found this video absolutely fascinating in, in the sense that here with the German Empire they were trying to expand their land and expand really their culture as much as possible and undergo the this process of eliminating other cultures languages and I, I find that absolutely interesting another one that I came across was the Czech population in Austria and how I learned that the Czechs migrated from really the Czech Republic to Austria for a better life in that period of really the late 19th century and the 20th century where when they came to Vienna they really were found themselves in harsh conditions bad issues that they were facing up against it included like discrimination and the fact is like they were exploited poorly because of the fact that they were Czech and not Austrian and they were forced to kind of learn the German language but over time they became integrated within the communities and even though that the Czech population in Austria now is kind of much smaller the impact that the Czechs had their presence there and their language and their culture that they brought into Austria really is long-lasting I really like that in this channel Sir Manatee really discusses the way that these groups within Central Europe started to interact with each other and how at first many times they would be discriminated against yet the 
these minority groups that came into Germany or came into a different sphere of influence within Europe started to slowly integrate and bring their culture and bring their food with them and change the way that the society was presently at that time. And I like that he uses a lot of images and photos from the 19th century uh, and the 20th century. So you get this pan and zoom shots of really great images from that period of time. And because he's a history student from central Germany, he's able to access a lot better historical records for his videos than uh, from a lot of other channels that are kind of giving their opinion from a different perspective where it's best from coming from a native of that country and them talking about societies and cultures that he is in contact with as you know in Germany most people have to be multilingual they're more aware of other cultures and societies so because of that he's able to kind of talk more in detail about that period and be able to access the kind of historical records of those specific time periods the one video I really watched last night I really loved was the history of goulash because again he doesn't just focus on these types of content where he's talking about the German Empire and the history in 19th and early 20th century he will deviate at times and I think this is a great example of that I absolutely love goulash my mom who is Austrian and I'm Austrian as well I was born in 1995 in that country uh, she's really fantastic at cooking goulash with spatula and I highly recommend anybody try it out as it's an excellent dish and and learning from that video how it's a very much a simple dish that started within the area of Hungary and from there it started to spread out to Austria the Czech Republic and and Poland and Germany and how each different group that made contact and became more aware of goulash had their different spin on it and how over time with the introduction of different spices from all around the world goulash radically got improved and changed and that's what's so great about this dish is that all these kind of additions to goulash has been making it so so much of a great dish except for the additions that have been made in the United States as Sir Manichi actually stated within the video that Americans really don't know how to make really great goulash <laughs> and I really like that as well I love the little character of Sir Manichi you know the little the little guy with the top hat I think that's fun as he has that as his basically his avatar within his videos and just the fact that even though these videos don't have like kind of video or anything like that because he's really discussing periods of time that are within the 19th and 20th century the way that he's able to access a lot of these records and these images and photographs is just awesome and I love watching these videos because of that because I'm learning about aspects of these countries within Central Europe that I really was not made aware of it's absolutely fantastic channel I think it's great his latest video why the Kaiser Reich built so many monuments is also fantastic because he kind of talks about the locations of many monuments that were built during the rise of the German Empire and he goes into discussion about why they and how they became tourists attractions the type of people these monuments are for and the, the reasons why that were behind why these monuments were constructed in the first place and I really like it as of the making of this video Sir Manity has about 15,000 subscribers and around 28 videos so I highly recommend you guys subscribe to Sir Manity as it's a fantastic German Central European history channel that you would absolutely love so go ahead and subscribe Mika Lefay, I hope I'm pronouncing her name correctly, but this is a pretty new YouTuber as she's posted her first video about two months ago and she on her channel has essentially four videos, two main videos and two shorts. And from what I see, I really like the content that she's making. The video that I came across and the way that discovered her channel was Hikikomori, the haunting echoes of eugenics in Japan. In that video, she makes the claim that the reason why there's this huge development of Hikikomori or people in Japan who have isolated themselves from society is because of the effects of the presence of eugenics programs that were in place for several decades in Japan and how this has had an effect on the way that mental illness and intellectual disabilities are perceived and stigmatized in Japan. I really like this video because the fact is that I never really knew that Japan had a really long effective eugenics program in their country for several decades post World War II. I mean I think it was up until the 90s that many of these kind of eugenics programs of forcing people who had mental disabilities, intellectual disabilities, to be sterilized. And many times in these programs, a lot of the family members were very much behind the reason why they're forcing other family members to be sterilized because they felt it was best for them to do it to kind of improve their people, to remove these types of mental illnesses and intellectual disabilities that were present within their society. And it was a really informative video and I absolutely loved the presentation she does. She's just talking with a microphone in her hand and really giving specific 
details of what led up to the adoption of eugenics in Japan, how it became so prevalent. I really enjoyed it. And the other video I then saw on her channel was the first video that she posted, The Untold History of Disabled Jesters, where she talks about that throughout medieval history, there were several jesters who were prevalent within a lot of monarchs' courts and were great companions to many monarchs, but they seemed to also have suffered from certain disabilities or had mental illnesses, but this didn't really have any sort of negative effect on their lives. As, as jesters, they kind of lived very fulfilling lives in a way. And I think that if you watch the video in its totality, you see the way that she kind of goes into the history of many of these disabled individuals who were very popular and very prevalent within the medieval courts, who were very much uh, companions, friends of the monarchs, well loved by many of the royal families. And she was talking about how a lot of historians have kind of ignored these individuals throughout history because they don't feel that it's very important to focus on these type of disabled individuals who were present within the kind of medieval aristocracy, the medieval monarchy. And I like the fact that her videos are very much focused on a disability history. And I think because of how niche it is, that's what's fascinating to me because it's not like your typical kind of history YouTuber. It's a history YouTuber that's focusing on a specific aspect of history, a niche aspect. And that is the history of many disabled individuals and how disability has been treated throughout many societies and cultures around the world. And I really like that. I mean, the eugenics video, the claim that she's making is that the implementation of those eugenics programs had an effect on Japan and is continuing to have a, a negative effect in the sense of like many of these isolated individuals who cannot seek mental health treatment because it's so stigmatized is because of those programs made the environment so where a lot of people really could not go out and seek help because of the fact that they might face serious consequences. One, of course, is that they might be sterilized. Again, it's, it's really horrifying and insane to me that the, pro those programs were in place in Japan, and I'm really glad I came across this video and learned more about that. I was, I was completely ignorant of these events and these programs. So I highly recommend you guys check out her channel, uh, Mika LaFay. I hope I'm pronouncing the name correctly. And as of the making of this video, she has about four videos on this channel, and she has about 5,000 subscribers, and hopefully we can get those numbers up. I really hope you guys have an interest in the history of disability or disability history as she really does a really great job in her videos of presenting information in a way that's very intriguing and interesting and it's fun to listen to her and it's she can be very engaging and she can be not boring into the presentation of a lot of this information so I really like that so go ahead and check her out and subscribe war archive or the war archive i've been very much fascinated with the events as it's been happening since the russian invasion of ukraine in february 2022 as i've been following along what's been happening throughout that war and i found a lot of youtube channels that do analysis and discussions of the ukrainian war there's a multitude of them i can list them off but the reason why i wanted to recommend war archive is the fact that he this person as of the making of this video has only posted eight videos and this person is making videos in the same form of Live It Forevermore, the channel that really was, that's really great at making these very informative videos with great animations. And I feel like War Archive is very similar to that specific YouTube channel. I like the fact that the way that he kind of discusses these events in a very straightforward way, but a very easily understood way of like analyzing the battles, the key important decisions that were made in that war on a kind of tactical and battlefield level. And I love the animations that he does to kind of help simplify and explain the events as they happened. Now the way that I discovered this channel was through the video The Battle for Hostomel Airport, an animated analysis. This was the first video that I saw of his and I really enjoyed it because The Battle of Hostomel Airport actually was on the news for a while and I was trying to figure out the key important events of how this kind of assault on this airport occurred, what were the failures that happened with the Russians attempting to take the Hostomel Airport in a way of stopping or I guess preventing any sort of flights in or out through Kiev and I guess in a way trying to take Kiev altogether but it, by doing so they lost a large number of troops and aircraft and other equipment. I love that he discusses that in detail and in a way that's very much understandable. I know that there's other channels that do this that do the kind of animations of you have tanks and vehicles and kind of movements on an animated map but I think that the key thing I like about this guy is how he presents it versus other channels. It's not too showy, it's not too overly animated 
animated, it's very simple, and it's straightforward in its animations, and you understand how these events are kind of occurred, and you like what you see in the way, and I think his voice is also very good with his voiceover narrations, I appreciate that, and I really want to continue seeing this guy uploading more videos talking about the battles that happen in Kiev, battles that happen in Kharkiv, and, and other aspects of the kind of other battles that happen during this present Ukrainian war that really people aren't really aware of, and discuss them in detail, and give really great information on it to better help people understand what's really going on in that theater of war. Because the fact is, is that a lot of the information that's coming out of Ukraine, sometimes it's hard to understand what's happening. There's a lot of misinformation. Who's being victorious? Who's not being victorious? Who's gaining ground? Who's not gaining ground? So yeah, I really appreciate this channel for just going on the simple level of going to a specific event or a battle that occurred during this present war and just discussing it in detail in a way that like other documentaries would do on other other channels talk about age-old battles during World War II or during the Vietnam War. So I really appreciate this channel, War Archive. Please go and subscribe to the guy. As of the making of this video, he's about 46,000 subscribers and he has only about eight videos. So yeah, please check him out. He's really great, informative stuff, and uh, yeah. And thus that concludes this video. I hope you guys enjoyed that I listed off four really great YouTube channels. I was gonna add a fifth one, but I looked over the list that I had and I feel like this was a good enough list and I kinda didn't wanna add a fifth one. I was kind of satisfied with the selection that I had. So I hope you guys enjoyed nonetheless. Please let me know what type of YouTube channels you guys enjoy and list them off in the comment section because I love discovering YouTube channels that are obscure and that really make well edited great content that is either educational informative or delve into sci-fi uh, stories or whatever what have you you know I love that type of content from people who need more views and I feel that these channels that I listed off really do need a lot more views and I hope you guys will check them out all of these uh, all of these channels will be in the link in the description below so please go ahead and subscribe to those channels with all that said I hope everyone's doing well um, and I hope everyone has a wonderful day.